Many years ago, in the foreign land of Nippon, there waged a gruesome battle on the hollowed grounds of Toys R Us. The battle was fought on the Nintendo GameCube on the then recently released Gairanto Smash Brothers Udraksu, or just Super Smash Brothers Melee. Fittingly called the Melee Toys R Us National Tournament, the tournament was an official Nintendo Championship, the culmination of several smaller Toys R Us qualifier tournaments held across Japan. Here in Toshimane, a now defunct Tokyo amusement park, the winners of the Toys R Us qualifiers would be brought to a single children's toy store to fight for the title of Toys R Us Melee Champion. Or something. Surprisingly, a Mario player was the one to take home the crown. Unsurprisingly, it was the last time a Mario player won anything. Alongside this tournament and its qualifiers, however, were promotional booths set up for competitors and non-entrants alike. Here, they could bring their GameCube memory cards to receive a save file with two exclusive and otherwise completely unobtainable in-game trophies, Mario and Yoshi and Samus Unmasked. These trophies weren't even known to exist until July of 2002, a few months before the national tournament, when some Japanese dude named Masahiro Sakurai showed them off in a blog post. In it, he shared screenshots of the two trophies, but curiously left Samus's trophy turned around to hype up what was then her first appearance in 3D, adding that she looks like neither an anime girl nor a pop star. He continued by saying there's also no Samus Undressed trophy. Well, actually, I've been on a few websites where things like that are... Never mind. Near the bottom, he explains that while they're currently unobtainable, he has plans to make them obtainable in the future, though he didn't exactly specify when or where. But now we know where. Japanese Toys R Us stores from the months of August 2002 to October 2002. Sakurai caps off his blog post with a warning that, when the trophies do become available, however, acquiring them will directly overwrite your save data. Huh. Now, even though these trophies were only able to be legitimately unlocked at these events in Japan, despite this limited release, the trophies not only exist on other versions, but are actually fully translated in every language the game is offered in. Is this evidence that these were once planned to be available worldwide? Maybe. What's more likely though, in my opinion, is that these localization teams just translated all in-game trophy text because they weren't specified not to. But what about the rest of the world? Is it truly just impossible to get these two trophies despite their existence in the game's data? Well, you could unlock them via action replay on a GameCube. Or if you're not 40 years old, you could just emulate it and Google a code to unlock all the trophies. Or for extra authenticity, you could scroll down to a code that enables what's called debug mode. With this code, you can unlock the trophies the way I presume they were actually unlocked at these booths in Japan. A pre-made save file with the trophies unlocked via the debug menu, which was then disabled again to prevent tampering. This also explains why the method of distribution for these trophies required overwriting save data completely, as opposed to just adding the trophies to existing save files. Re-enabling debug mode on commercial releases to unlock the trophies was likely too cumbersome, so they settled for the more convenient option, overwriting all of the melee data on your memory card. There is one more trophy that remains only obtainable in Japan, though, and this one is debatably even more exclusive. A dorky-looking dinosaur dude named Tamagon. Hailing from the 1984 Famicom game Devil World, the game this guy's from, Tamagon was the player character of Miyamoto's take on maze games, and his response to the success of Pac-Man. But because of the game's use of religious imagery, something Nintendo of America was strongly against the use of in their games at the time, Devil World never saw an official release in North America, which is also why Tamagon was made impossible to get in North American releases of Melee. Check out those weird-ass feet. It's a shame, too, because his unlock criteria was actually relatively easy. 
just play 200 melee matches and he'd start showing up randomly during matches or in the lottery. Though, while Tomagon is impossible to legitimately unlock in North American copies of Melee, he still exists in the game's files, and like Mario and Yoshi and Samus Unmasked, is able to be unlocked via Action Replay or the aforementioned Dolphin Codes. Likewise, his description is also fully translated, but has its source game erroneously listed as Demon World. Funnily enough, not only does Tomagon remain unobtainable in Europe despite Devil World's release there in 1987, he's completely removed from the game in PAL. So, sorry Europeans. Even with hacks, you'll just never have all the trophies. Unless, for some reason, Europe collectively decides to switch to an older version of the game. Like that ever happen. Oh.